Today on the Relationship Renovation Podcast, we dive right into the holiday season with you and we talk about how you and your partner can become connected during these times. We talk about the challenges that some couples face during these times and we help you set intentions and actionable steps that are gonna help you deal with what can be a very stressful time. So stay tuned. We know this is gonna be really useful for you. Do you wanna feel more emotionally and intimately connected with your partner? Then we have the tool that is exactly right for you. We have a program called Relationship Renovation at Home, and it is an amazing way for you and your partner to have a structured way weekly to work together. Because we deserve awesomeness in our relationships. Just go to our website, relationshiprenovation.com. At the top, there's a link to at home program, and it will give you a free lesson. If you want to just check it out and see if it's something that works for you and your partner, we know it will make a significant positive impact on your relationship. Hello, all, and welcome to the Relationship Renovation Podcast. I'm Tara Kerwin. And my name is EJ Kerwin. We are a married couple, blended family, a couple of therapists with a couples counseling program or method called Relationship Renovation, a staff of about 15. Awesome staff. Awesome therapists who do incredible work here in Tucson. Not to mention our director of operations and office manager. Yeah, we have an incredible crew of people. And our mission is just to help people have the healthiest relationships they can. Relationship wellness. Yeah, and to grow as human beings together. And that fits right into the fact that we are right at the beginning, the middle, we are emerging into the holiday season. And we wanted to take a couple of episodes to talk about ways in which you can be mindful, uh, use your personal insight, and really have a connected holiday season with your partner. Instead of maybe the outside stresses of the holiday season, maybe pulling you guys apart a little bit. So we were kind of planning our podcast and we're like, wow, there's a lot here. So it's definitely going to be broken up into two different episodes because we really want to get into the core of all of the different things that we've identified that can be challenging over the holidays. Because again, yes, the purpose is how do we both have a holiday that feels good for each of us? And we also go into it feeling really like we're going to support one another and it's going to be awesome. Absolutely. And so when we were talking about this before the episode, we wanted to identify first, like what is it about the holiday season that can be difficult for couples? And, you know, in a general sense, what we know as clinicians is that during stressful times, you know, when things are different, when mm -hmm. there's a lot coming at us, it is just a very natural thing for us to fall back into unconscious patterns. Right. That during stressful times, we all tend towards our own personal excesses. And what happens when there's a stressful moment, when things are different, and we fall into those like, you know, adaptive behaviors from our past, we sort of like become isolative. We become less mindful. We become less attuned to our partner. And so really what the holiday season is this sort of scheduled like interruption to our life. Everything changes in a lot of ways for, for this month or so. Yes. And definitely holidays tend to amplify pre-existing dynamics that might not be so healthy in the relationship. Yeah. They, they will amplify what already might pull the two of you apart. And again, it's, it's this idea that we all have adaptive behaviors from earlier in our life that helped us survive, but in the context of our relationship, oftentimes they become maladaptive. And so what we wanna do today and next episode, right. look at what are some of those very specific areas of relationship of the holidays that we need to be very intentional about? So today's episode is going to focus on kind of that distribution of labor between partners over the holidays and also that self-care life family balance. And then our part two episode will focus on the finances and then nuclear and extended family, which we all know can be Really joyful and also very stressful. Absolutely. So so the first topic we're going to sort of go at is just sort of like how we deal with 
all that comes with the holidays, right? Christmas parties, gift buying, gift giving, spending more money. Yeah, all, all of that. And here's the other thing is that oftentimes we just have a way in which we've adapted yes. as a couple. So for instance, in our relationship, right? Tara adores the holidays, right? Like like our holidays. I am the Chevy Chase yeah, of holidays, baby. It, it begins November 1st, right? And <laughs> she is it like, does. she's going 90 on November 1st, right? And myself, I'm a little more reserved about it. I like the holidays. I love the holidays, but I, I don't have quite that fervor, right? And so what happened over the years was just Tara took it all on from decorating the house to buying gifts to organizing the holiday party. Mm -hmm. Like she just took it all on. And at first, I think it was it was sort of like fine with her. Yeah, it was never like, oh, well, you're going to take all this on. It happened just very unconsciously, unintentionally. But what happened was five, six, seven, eight years down the line. Four kids later. Yeah, and life becoming more complicated is it began to like, I think it yeah. was like two or three years ago where yes. I think like right around Christmas time, Tara was kind of like, I feel like I am the only one here who is like making this place jolly. Like, I feel like I'm the only person here buying gifts. Thinking about any of it or all of it, right? Like yeah. your parents and the kids. And yes, I actually, it was all on me and it started to not feel good. Yeah. And it built resentment and it, and it definitely didn't lead to us feeling connected. And so there is a lot more that we take on during the holiday season. There's just more tasks, there's more things going on, there's more dynamics within families. And so what we thought is like one of the most important things is just sort of looking at first, like how do each of you sort of like conceptualize, like what, is, how do you feel the holidays together? What type of holiday, because again, everyone has their own unique like expectations or differences around the holidays. And if you can talk about it kind of before the holiday season hijacks you, you can each be able to have like a version of what you want together. Because again, it's going to be different. I'm not ever asking you to be the Chevy Chase of our home, but wow, wouldn't it be nice if like we could split up the gift buying or split up the holiday party or the elf on the shelf dudes every night. <laughs> so wouldn't that be nice? And and the thing is like, at first it probably did come out as resentment. Like I was angry, like, why aren't you doing any of this? And then I'm like, hold on, Tara. Like I've been doing this. We never, it wasn't like a planned thing. And EJ's pretty cool. Like if I ask him like, hey, this would mean a lot if you could help me. I have a feeling like he's going to be okay with it. And I have to let go too of some of that control that I would have around. I wanted to be creative for everybody's gifts and da, 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 da. Well, like I gave some of that up. Well, and, and what we want to encourage all of you out there to do is have this discussion now instead of, because the way this became apparent to us that this was a problem and this was actually kind of pulling us apart in the holidays versus bringing us together was it was like literally like December 23rd or 24th and like we're sitting in the living room and there was like sort of, it, it ended up being a point of conflict of Tara being like, I feel like this is like all on me. And it was almost like too late, right? And so if you can have this discussion right now, right. if you guys can sit down and say, okay, like, hey, we're, we're entering into this month of festivities and of, of interaction with family and all of those things. A, bu a busy season, right? People have things scheduled like all of the time, every weekend, lots of get togethers. It's just it's not like your usual month. Yeah. And what do we want it to look like? You know, I think that that's a great entry point. Yeah. How will it be a fulfilling season for both of us? Absolutely. And I say, do this like in a fun way, like go out to dinner, right? And talk about it and make it like, hey, how can we each have what we want and make it happen? Yeah. Right. Dr. Stan's, you know, amazing peas, plan, predict, prepare sets us up for success every time. Yes. And I think it's like a little bit of a balance act that you have to do between accessing the past of like noticing like, okay, in the past, Tara has taken almost everything on. I've been like slower to become jolly and you know maybe even sort of pump the brakes on certain things. Mm -hmm. And because if, if you're not careful, like having that discussion of like the past leads to sort of, 
conflict because then one person might get defensive or the other person might really get stuck in resentment. So you have to sort of balance between recognizing old patterns, but also just like really sort of envisioning what are, you know, this kind of is similar to our six words that we do with couples of what are the six words that describe the relationship you want to have? How do you like together describe what's the holiday season that you want to have together? Yeah. And just again, trying to make it feel like a fair balance for each of you, because maybe let's just say, EJ, you're not a good gift buyer. I am more than willing to buy the gifts. And you're like, you could wrap them. <laughs> I mean, it's again, we all have our strengths, areas of strengths, whether it's gift giving, gift buying, planning for the holiday season, cooking, you name it. Or like understanding how to provide the electricity to the 2000 lights in our front yard. Exactly. So you just get to kind of take your strengths that you have and like try to distribute balance that feels good for both of you. Have the discussion, see what makes it work, what works for you. And I am guarantee it will feel so much better than if you guys did not have this discussion and one partner feels like it's more on them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anytime we we do that, predict, plan, prepare, we're gonna probably end up with a much more positive outcome between the two of us. And kind of going into the second topic, if that's okay, because it's like kind of you started it off as, you know, stressful times, we tend to our own, natural excesses. And that if we're not careful, we can really isolate from our partner. And so the idea of like self-care, family life balance for the month of December is so important, but I don't think that we talk about it. I don't think that we share it with each other. And I that's another topic I really wanted to get into today. Absolutely. Because we want to feel connected, you know, and the holidays come with, you know, we get out of our patterns, right? And one of those patterns is around self-care, you know, is around like having the time to work out, is what are we eating during the holidays? I know there's a box of peanut brittle on our freaking Mm -hmm. in our kitchen that I can't keep away from. And normally I'm, I'm not into stuff like that. There's alcohol and substances that it's a time where, where there's a little more, you know, there's more parties, there's more festive drinks. And again, if we're not careful, we can each just sort of fall into patterns and then we're not connected in them at all. No, it's like, you're just on autopilot and the season is gone and you're just like, what happened? What ha- I, know, I know I gained 10 pounds. I know that I did not feel connected with my partner. I know, So we just want to make it different. We want to give you guys some tools to be like, wow, how can we really feel connected and have these, like, it's almost like an acceptance of like, hey, you know, here's our patterns for the holiday. Here's my pattern. Here's our pattern. Like maybe we eat more, maybe we drink more, but hey, we're going to share with each other and talk about that and accept that like in the next four weeks, our life is going to be crazy busy. We're going to be eating more sugar than we ever have. We're going to be having more holiday drinks and emotions might be running high, yeah. but you're talking about it. You're not like doing it in a way that feels separate and alone because also some of those behaviors, whether it's drinking too much or eating too much can produce a lot of shame. Well, and and that's an interesting thing too, right? Is, you know, I know we're therapists and we tend to look at things a little bit deeper than, than others might, but it's not always just as simple as like, oh, there's more peanut brittle out. So my, you know, eating habits are different or we go to more parties. So there's more drinking. There's also the fact that it's a really stressful time. Right. And there's, you know, like we're going to talk about in the next episode that money can be something that's really challenging during this time. There's family dynamics that come. And so some of those, like some of those, behaviors that kind of mess with our wellness are also coping mechanisms, right? you know, and we might not be recognizing it, but like maybe the uptick in drinking has to do with coping with stress and not just all festiveness. And if you're, we know this to be true, that if you're saying it out loud to someone that feels safe to you, right? Hopefully that's your intimate partner that you're not alone in it. That again, if you are like not going to the gym as much or you are eating more than you have or drinking more, that when you're sharing it with someone, it feels like you're kind of being accountable and being in this place of acceptance versus 
not saying anything, being in a place of shame, then your self-esteem starts to kind of go down or you're starting to feel insecure and then you become irritable and then you're kind of projecting onto other body else because you don't feel good yourself. I mean, it can just really spiral out of control, you know, but, and so you guys have to discuss what feels good, what doesn't feel good. I know that me going to the gym a few times a week feels really good. Over the holidays, it goes down a little, but I do enough, like two to three times a week. That still feels good. If I didn't do it at all, that would feel really bad. So I'm always bringing EJ in like, hey, honey, make sure like that you are supporting me and going to the gym like two, three times a week instead of, you know, six times. Well, and, and that's so important because if you have this discussion and you recognize each of you of like, hey, what's gonna be different? What's gonna be challenging? Then you can support one another, right? And so if I say like, okay, Tara, like I definitely know that my nutrition gets totally offline during this time and sometimes it's harder for me to fit in workouts, right? Mm -hmm. And I can accept that to a certain extent. Like I'm okay that I'll put on some extra weight over the holidays or, or whatever, but I don't want it to be out of control because then I just right. wake up like, you know, January 1st and I feel like crap about myself. So can you help me? Right. You know, can you be supportive? And and I'm giving you permission, you know, to let me know if you're seeing like that, like I haven't been to the gym in like a, a full week or my nutrition is like really offline that I need your, I'm asking for your support in this because I accept that there's gonna be a variance, but I also don't wanna go to the point where I just feel bad about myself. And the thing that we're doing here is we're making, we're identifying patterns, my patterns, our patterns together. So you're starting to make some of these unintentional or unconscious things conscious, which means then we can act with intention. Yeah. We do not act with intention if we're not identifying what it is that we do. And, and this is so important around substance use. I think I, I think we have to like really name that as, as an important thing, right? Mm -hmm. Because even though substances are definitely a way in which we can have fun, they're also a way that we can cope with really negative emotions, really negative feelings that we're struggling with, right? And also, they certainly don't help if we're feeling really disconnected from one another, right? And it can lead to some pretty tough moments for a couple. And if we can also have a discussion with each other about that, you know, is drinking something that has caused us problems? and try to make agreements on how you guys can support each other or what those resources are. And I just wanted to say this because just a couple of days ago, I had one of our newer therapists at our center and she was like, oh, I'm not sure what to do with this couple because I guess like alcohol intake really increases. Like, should I refer them out for substance abuse counseling? And I was like, no, but around the holidays, we see a massive influx of more alcohol use. It's how do we support this couple in having agreements around what is okay and what is not okay? What are those resources in the community that we can provide? What is the motivation of the person that might be struggling or the partner around the support? Not just like, hey, this is bad. You're drinking more over the holidays. No, absolutely. There's no judgment there, but creating the support system to talk about it and know that that person is not alone, that is like what is significant. Well, and, and it's that whole you know phrase, like it, when you name it, you tame it, right? Oh, yeah. That if you go into the holiday season knowing like, hey, this is a thing, you know, th this is a time where I might drink more and I really wanna be thoughtful about it, you know, I, or, or I just wanna recognize that it is something that, you know, I don't want to go on into January, February, March. You're, you're naming it, you know, instead of that feeling of, of like, oh, you know, I'm bad. You I'm know? bad. Yeah, shame. Well, and so not just with substance use, but there's a lot of individuals that struggle with increased depression, sadness, anxiety, over the holidays because of many reasons, whether there's mental health issues, whether it's because of seasonal depression. I mean, there's many different factors, but if you're talking about it 
and you're saying, hey, I'm here to support you. Here's all of our resources. Here's our plan. That is going to be such a better outcome than if you're just like, oh gosh, it's going to happen again. Like, and everybody's on eggshells and like, is he or she going to be good or bad? Like what's going to happen? No, talk about it. Make a plan for it. Support each other in it. There's a lot of people that struggle with mood stuff around the holidays because of right their own stuff and their own family stuff from way back when. Well, and I and I think that really circles back to the initial point we were talking about in this episode is sitting down with your partner first and talking about like what your real hopes are for the holidays, right? And wrapped up in there could be a moment of like, hey, I also want to tell you like this is a time of the year where I get real sad, you know, I miss a, a family member who who's passed away or I remember things from from being a kid that weren't really pleasant about the holiday season. And so I just want to like let you in because if you don't let your partner in on those dynamics, you know, you can't expect them then to be supportive of them. You know, we have this thing we've talked a lot about where we want our partner just to read our mind. We want our partner to just notice like, why don't you know that this time of year is hard for me because I'm away from my family? And so what we want you to do is we want you to sit down, have these conversations, talk about the type of holiday season you want to have, yes. talk about the challenges that you feel that you might face dur- during them, and then talk about how you can create systems that keep you really connected over this next month. You are in it together, not alone. Absolutely. And I promise you, like, if you have these conversations and you sit down with an open heart, it is going to be fantastic. Because when you don't have a plan, that's when we get all tripped up, Absolutely. right? And everything flares up and all that stuff that's already kind of like laying low, idling, it's going to flare up. And we want to like have some kind of um, systems to be able to say like, hey, this is going to happen and here's how we're going to support each other. Get empowered in this together. And so today we talked about beginning the holiday season with your partner with a lot of intentionality in sort of a broader sense around mm-hmm. around just the type of holiday season you have and and how you guys can maintain a sense of of wellness but also sort of like imbibe in you know the holiday season right we talked about things a little more generally and then in the next episode make sure you tune in next friday because what we're going to go is we're going to dig deeper into two very specific topics and those topics are money. Finances can be a significant stressor during these times. And then the other is family, family and how to be connected in the midst of the sort of, you know, the amplification of, yeah. of exposure to family. And we really love hearing your feedback. Like we want to know how this worked because if it works for you, it works for others. It works for us. This is why we share. This is why we have our podcast. And we would love to hear feedback. Yes. Yeah, send, send us an email to info at relationship com and share what are the challenges that you and your partner face during the holiday season. Because I know when people hear other people's challenges, which are often very similar, Mm. it normalizes it. And then we'll also talk about it on air. We'll talk about those topics so we can give some real direct feedback on like, hey, here's ways that we think you could manage this in in a way that might help you guys feel more connected. And also how if you are kind of using these resources and having those conversations, like how that changed the system and how it was different for you. Absolutely. Yeah, so, you know, get out there this weekend, talk to your partner, have a really thoughtful, loving conversation with them about the holidays and how you're gonna approach it in a very mindful way and a very connected and loving way. And, you know, we know that these types of discussions, the more you have them, the better they go, the more connected you feel with each other. And the easier they get. 100%. As always, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Bye-bye. Bye. Me and you just singing on the train. Me and you listening to the rain. Me and you, we are the same. Me and you have all the fame we need. Indeed, you and me are we.